Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, I showed you how I go about drawing this from photograph we have here. If you haven't seen that, and if you're curious, I'll put the link in the description for you to check it out. Today, let's get into some color. Mm-hmm. So, we have a line work here. Uh, create a new layer. Um, let's call this fill. So, what I do for... There are a number of ways I can approach the styling of the color. Uh, this video is mainly about just me experimenting. Um, but uh, I think I'll just stick with what I how I usually do. Um, so let's start with this fill layer. So I hit L for lasso tool, and then I just roughly kind of trace the outlines like so, and then fill it with pink. But I think in this case, we can probably use the, uh, what is this, magic, magic wand tool, that's right, to just save, save some time. Yeah, so I, some, with my line work, I'm fairly confident that there's no gaps other than down here. So I think I can save some time by using the wand tool. So let's select the outside and I'll hold shift and then select the, this little negative space between her arm and her body. And then still holding shift and I'll hit the bottom area here. And to invert that selection, control shift I I apologize for Mac users. I'll be dealing with the Windows terminology. <laughs> so I'll select this uh, fill layer again, and uh, uh, it, instead of just filling it as is, oops. So let's take a look. If I fill just as is, you know, uh, the line kind of jets out from. Or the color just out from this line work right here. Uh, I want it to be a little more clean than that. So what we'll do? Let's go to select, modify. Mm, let's see, selection this inside. So contract, contract. How many pixels? Uh, maybe three. So now the selection has shrunk a bit so now when we fill it oh to fill it uh, I use shift backspace and it'll bring bring up this fill window and it's usually by default is set to foreground color which I chosen to be this hot pink so I can see better and here we go So 90% of the work is already done for us with this method. So I'm just gonna go ahead and you know, just color in what we missed. Okay. Okay. I think that's that's good. Beautiful. 
Now, uh, next step, I'll get into just laying out flat colors. I uh, usually start with the color that is dominates the majority of the uh, image. Wait, let's pick this navy blue for the dress. So I'll create a new layer, top of this fill layer. Uh, let's call it dress. And I'll hold Alt. And if I put my mouse cursor in between this dress and the fill layer, the icon changes. Um, in CS4, which what I used to use is a different icon, but it's it's the same nonetheless. So holding Alt, I tap on it, and then now dress is parent dress layer is parented to this fill shape. Uh, I mean there are diff many different ways to go about achieving the same masking method. You can actually go and mask layers or folders, but this is what I use exact same thing however you do it uh, so those of you who don't know what this does is now that dress layer is parented to this fill which is pink whatever I do will not go outside of that pink it's great for this sort of thing when you have a clear line work and you're not really painting like this is useful for when you know your exact shape that you're gonna be working with this also helps you know I can just make a quick selection you know I can just like go outside you know Ooh. and it'll stay inside beautifully Now that I'm, I'm deciding to clean this dress layer color a bit. Um, we can save a bit of time when it comes to skin layer, because I'm just gonna put like a blob of skin tone just underneath to save time. It's it's messy, <laughs> but it. I don't think it really matters for what I'm trying to do here. Uh, let's call this one, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I create a new layer and then I just drag it under or, you know, alt click, it's the same thing. I'm gonna put it right below the dress layer here and just fill it. Hey. Although, yeah. <laughs> sure. Alright, we'll call that skin. <laughs> look at the thumbnail, like, look how, like, <laughs> messy this is, but, you know, <laughs> doesn't really matter. Um, let's call this next layer legs. And just, you know, do that. Um, beam for wooden beam that is right here and hair hair what colors are hair the brown a bit purplish but I'll get to that later. Majority, we're looking, we're just filling the basic colors. 
Excuse me. So, we're dealing with just a flat color right now, so it's just best guess. You can always change it later on. So, um, you know, brown for the hair. Let's make the selection. That's a pretty good flat color. Okay, and uh, next one, I'll put it, name it face. Oh, and just everything. Lips, teeth, eyes, and sometimes irises. Um, this is really basic Photoshop 101 tip, but when you're in brush mode, if you just hold Alt, that turns to the eyedropper. So you can quickly change colors instead of going to your swatches or color picker here. Let's see. Cool. Alright guys, thanks for watching. <laughs> no, just kidding. Let's see, what should we do next? Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, let's throw down basic shadow layer. I'll name it shadow. I'll put put this shadow layer on top of everything. And let's go to my default. Shadow tone. For these type of illustration, yeah, it's about maybe this color. purple I could I sometimes do black but that's when I decide to do like very heavy black style um, uh, illustration kind of like a Robert Valley style you guys all know Robert Valley if you don't know check it out you know it's more you know very different type of approach yeah like robber valley or um ah uh, uh, the name escapes me who did hellboy <laughs> uh mike oh uh mike Mino manola is that how you say it <laughs> um yeah kind of like that uh, I'm just doing this, uh, although I, I am starting to like it, but uh, let's, we're not gonna do this sort of style for this one. But, you know, it's uh, one of the styles I like to use time to time. It's, you know, it's, it's really graphic. It's really cool. Or if you if you guys seen Red Line, the animation. Red Line from the Studio Madhouse, I believe. <laughs> it's pretty epic. Like it uses that heavy black style as well. But let's just continue on with what I've been doing recently, which is just purple and soft, soft colors.
Oh, I forgot to uh, open up an image on my other monitor here. I don't look at it often, but it's useful to have as a reference. So, on this sh shadow layer, we're coloring with purple. Uh, I go to I set the mode of the layer to multiply and opacity maybe like around 40% or so and then I'll just work with that maybe 50 for now so in the illustration in the photo I mean the light light is coming from in this direction in general and that's pretty much all you really need to know um, as long as you have a decent knowledge of the form and structure you can kind of guess your way th through these uh, shading especially because we're not working very realistically and it's it actually helps to go by your instinct instead of referencing the photo all the time because it helps you to be a little more graphic and a little more clean uh, um, Yeah. So here, I'm gonna. It really depends how you, what you want to achieve. Um, excuse me. You know, I can actually shade all this. Trying to follow like anatomy and the f the fold that I have drawn here. Um, to a certain extent. That actually looks pretty good. Let's go with that. <laughs> but but uh, you know, uh, I was thinking of just doing, just maybe just straight, just for a graphic purpose, because I feel like it. <laughs> um, so that's the thing that might that will. Uh, make your drawing unique I, I um, from maybe just copying straight from photos it's just when you decide to do things just because <laughs> I'm sorry uh, I'm not a designer so I can't tell you um, ins and outs of the uh, philosophy that goes behind these things but it's been working out for me somewhat. Um, it's certainly good to have some kind of knowledge behind them, but um, you know, you just you just color things in a certain way just because that's the way you prefer. like here neck here for example um, looking at the reference you know realistically it's more like the shadow here and then it's like that right uh, but you know I just decided to do just that
and I forgot to make another window for my other monitor so I can reference the whole image at one glance I mean sure there's the uh, navigator window here for that but I don't know I like to look at the other monitor uh, I think I think initially I started doing that primarily because I'm using Cintiq and Cintiq colors are a little off uh, they're slightly darker and depending on uh, your setup uh, I think mine is slightly warmer than the other other monitor and and from my experience uh, when I print these things if I ever uh, printing these uh, it matches up my other monitor quite well so I'm deciding to go with that well enough talking Now, if I want the um, anime-esque type of style, I would, you know, keep the shadow line clean like this. Um, but I'm gonna like soften it later. And a lot of these choices I'm making now, I learned through, <laughs> strictly learn from, <laughs> I say learn, but I, I mean, I stole them, <laughs> the styles <laughs> from other artists, looking at how they, uh, how they simplify things. Um, like. Um, yeah, so, so I use, um, I study other artist style, and then I kind of play with it for a while until I get bored, or I'll eventually go back to how I, go back to the way I'm comfortable drawing. And but subconsciously the artist style I play around with kinda gets assimilated into my way of drawing. That's uh right here is a little bit darker than I like, but I will address it later, you'll see. Gotta move a little bit faster than this. But this is relaxing. And I usually do these for to relax. <laughs> you know, I just come home from work, you know, listen to a podcast or have a beer. And um, yeah, just do these. I usually get these done in about less than two hours, usually. But I don't really keep track of the time that much since it's my uh, since I'm just relaxing.
I might have to color the legs very differently in a different color, not purple but more black. Um, I, I don't I don't recommend using black at all for shading. It's unless you're going for a specific style. But in this case the material that she's wearing might need for that much darker tone and you know in like school um, you know you may hear teachers say like oh don't use black to do shadows and because there really is no black um, in like real life especially like um, if you consider all the lights bouncing off of one object to another you know if this is like I won't get into it because I'm the last person you should ask about the color theory. <laughs> but if it's like a s sunlight on a bright day, then it's most likely gonna be blue. Um, oh it's most likely gonna be like this type of tone. And if wall is... Ah. Let's just focus on what we're doing. <laughs> okay, I'm almost done. Uh, so I would leave it like this if I'm looking to do uh, kind of like clean, very clean and rigid style of sh shading. But um, for my purpose, I'm gonna need to uh, color a little bit outside of what I want here. So I'm just gonna duplicate this shadow layer. I'm just gonna hide the other one in case I mess it up. So I'm just gonna make this shadow selection slightly bigger, just a tad bit, because you'll see. And things like putting a shadow under the uh, eye. Like this. It's something that I picked up from another artist. But funny thing is like after I picked up that graphic representation of shadow and look at the real life, 
and true enough there's you know and especially because it's sphere yeah the shadow like cast being casted like this So I mean you should always like study from life but it helps to look at how artists handle their foreshortening and then you look at the photo references or real life and kind of realize it helps you you know it, it helps you understand better <laughs> sometimes for me all right enough digressing let's see so let's soften up the shade shadow color uh, layer right so I select this shadow layer and if you can see my cursor I go down here and this is masking add layer mask and I hit that and it adds layer mask right in that layer right so on the left thumbnail you have this basic um, basic layer you used to and then on the right side of it there's a uh, layer masking and uh, I'm not gonna explain too much I assume many of you have an idea of what it is. But layer masking basically deals with only black and white. And whatever's white will show. And whatever's black, which I am coloring with right here, if you can see it, will not show. Why do I use layer mask? <laughs> You can ask any other artist and they'll tell you the exact same thing. Um, it's really easy to go back and forth. So I have this image here. Okay, I'm gonna do this just to demonstrate. If I don't have a layering mask, I can pretty much get the same effect by using brush and eraser. right this is basically what I'm trying to do soften it up I can pretty much get the same effect but if I decide to go back it's like oh no like I uh, <laughs> I messed something up and I want to go back well it, it's not as easy to go back because you already erased a selection but with a layering mask, you're not touching the actual drawing, but you're just playing around with them. <laughs> For lack of better term, like mask, right? Like, you know, it's completely separate from the drawing, so. It's not going to... You can go back and forth much easier. easier. You know, it can go completely erase everything and then, you know, bam, you're back to square one. So let's see. So for these, I'm picking soft round brush with the rounded tip. This is basic Photoshop brush. And I just soften it up. Um, I mean, I can easily go and select uh, or filter, blur, uh, Gaussian blur, Ga Gau <laughs> you know, the, you know, the regular blur that people use. I could do that. I, and I sometimes do to save time. That gives the, uh, applies blur to overall side of things, but. I usually don't like to use it because it like if you look at here it blurs inward so 
you're left with the this like bright color edge. But I want it like filled. And you have less control. Okay, I'll yeah, I'll shut up and uh, <laughs> I'll show you what I'm trying to do here. So let's turn down opacity a bit. Uh, to quickly change opacity, what I usually do is um, I mouse over to the text opacity, and then your mouse cursor will change to um, will change, and then from there you can click down and then you know drag left and right and it will um, it will adjust the opacity same thing with here and the layer same thing with fill that's a pretty good convenient trick to know okay well I'll just work with 100% for now Now for the neck area, or even like underneath the lip, I don't want to soften it too much because it's cast shadow. Um, depending on the style I'm going for, I might choose to leave it like completely clean like this. But for this one, I. I want all shadows to have a bit of softness so I'm gonna reduce my brush size and uh, you know give it a slight blur opposed to you know if it's larger then you have that You know, like this is the type of sh stuff I like. You know, it's like very soft here, soft edge here. And then slightly hard and then much softer when it goes goes around the curvature of our body here. Yeah. Nice variation, I like that. Hmm. Uh, this type of style is primarily f I learned from, or stole from, <laughs> uh, build pressing. That's is that how you say it? pressing? Uh, Yeah, he does it beautifully and in traditional too, so. Uh, here, I, I want to soften it as much as possible to emphasize the curvature, right? Because it's not a hard, it's not a cast shadow, whatever is happening here. It's happening because it's just natural, because of the natural curvature of her arm. 
so I want to soften it. But uh, what I want to do right now is um, I only have this much shadow that I've drawn to work with. I want to have at least like that much so I can have more room to soften it and have enough shadow left. So I'm just going to go back to my hard round brush. Uh, increase that a bit okay back to soft round brush on the masking layer and uh, yeah and so on We have a casting shadow from the skirt. I want to keep this edge as hard as possible. Um, it's not looking pretty good, but um, I'll I'll fix it afterwards. Let's move on. Yeah. I'm just gonna duplicate, back it up. And um, I'm gonna lower my opacity of the round brush, soft round brush. And then I'm just gonna slightly soften the other side of the shadow. What I'm doing is just to um, have that theoretical bounce light. So we'll have the uh, dark core shadow here. Right. right here. Right here. Core shadow. Oh, come on. Yeah. yeah. Like here. Here. You know. With core shadow. Ok, 
Okay, let's move on. <laughs> let's say this is good enough for our purpose. What do I do next? Uh, pa -pa -pa. Let's put some gradient. Oops. So I'm just gonna make a layer above the dress. I'm gonna control select the dress thumbnail, which will um, make a selection. And then I'll go to the uh, layer just above the dress. And let's just throw down a gradient. Not that color. Too bright. And the photo reference seems um, the top is darker and the bottom is lighter. Let's try to uh, go for that. I think usually you want the other way to lead the lead your eye up to the face. Ah, that's quite nice too. Um, skin. Do the same thing with skin. But I usually don't do um, use gradient tool for the skin. I just use the um, actual round brush since it's very selective. Light pink cheeks, maybe. I'm sorry if I'm zooming in and out too much, too often. Still, it's the way I'm used to draw, so. Um, hair. Let's do the hair. For the sake of saving some time, since this video has gone long quite a bit, let's simplify it. <laughs> Can I say not to use black? Well, I'm choosing to use black. Go to the legs. And this one I want to use black. I might even get rid of the shadow. Yeah, just get rid of it completely. And just keep the legs separate from all that and work on it. Make sure you're in the right layer.
Uh, this might be too rendered for for this illustration. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> But let's keep it for now and let's see if we can uh, fix that with the dress. I was working without having a selection, so the color kind of bled out to the, uh, the hand here. Uh, let's move on. Let's move on to. Because you can't be spending that much time just playing around. I mean, I can, but. <laughs> The video can't go on forever. Uh, I don't like that hair. I don't like that soft. Very not. It's not confident. This hair shading here. <laughs> it's. Beg my pardon, but you know we all we all did it once. Like when you're first getting into. When you're first getting into like digital painting, like you know, kids all they use is like soft round brush, and like this is exactly the look you get. <laughs> uh, oh, jeez. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this one right now. for a second while I figure this out. Okay, what have I done here? This is important. This will be a lot faster if you name if I name my layers properly instead of clicking on and off to see what they are. <laughs> Not even half done yet. <laughs> okay, the dress. The dress is this crazy pattern. Hmm, let's see. I was thinking about it and I have an idea what to do with it. So I'm just gonna make a new layer and go through my library of trusty textures okay that could work I'm just gonna make my own pattern which is basically like this
I might split this video to two parts so it'll be three in total for this illustration since it's running a little bit too long and I'll duplicate it okay. let's do another row Ah, do you know what? Let's go blur, motion blur. Oof. Let's get a bit softness. Duplicate it. Bam. Merge. Um, let's shrink that down. Yeah, that's about it. Multiply. Merge. I mean, duplicate. Merge. Now, if I want to be, if I want to go graphic with this, I could possibly. Just apply it like so. which should be a tiny bit smaller okay this doesn't look very good so let's see what do I want to do ah here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna move this pattern out of this whole our this pink selection here. I'm gonna put it into a folder. Let's name it pattern. Put, put it in there. Make a selection of that dress. Is that gonna work? No, that's not gonna work. Selection of the fill. Mm Okay, yeah, let's do that. Section of the fill, make a layering mask on the folder. And let's um, tweak the uh, selection a bit. Tweak the mask. So it's only at the. Um, so it's in the dress layer. Or I could do this, yeah. Okay, so I've done it. Um, I apologize if I'm not explaining every step. I want to move move ahead, so we're not here all day. Okay. Uh, so let's see if this works. I want to make a separate, several areas for this. Let's see. I want that going this way. Control T for transform and let's pick warp. I mean it's not gonna be perfect, but it's a quick cheat. Quick cheat for quick practice. I think there's a way to increase the uh, number of points here, but I'm just gonna stick with what we have. Alright, that looks pretty good. And, uh, I just, I wanna delete it, delete all this stuff to save time, but um, I'll make a masking layer. I have a feeling I might want to go back and forth. So I'm, I'm erasing these patterns with the masking layer. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, next. Duplicate this pattern. Let's work on that leg. Okay. Let's do the same thing. down a bit more. too good. I'm looking a little flat. I mean I am cheating here but I want to make it look as good as possible. Because that area needs to curve down like so. Oh, I think I'm losing. I think I'm losing it. <laughs> I might need to restart this pattern here. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna do that, and I'll be right back after I apply it to this whole dress, and I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so here it is. I finished the dress. Uh, I basically went ahead just I'll show you. Yeah I did that part, that, that just kinda separated into a few different parts so I can get the um, pattern forming right. It's actually a lot the pattern I have here is a lot tighter than the photo reference. So I'm just going to duplicate that pattern I made and I'm just going to merge it. I'm even going to merge. Yeah. Apply layer mask. Okay. So we have that. Now I'm going to make another layer and oh, let's see. Right now it's, it's obviously way too strong of a color. See if I can find a better screen. Screen's usually a pretty good choice. Okay, this opacity set to 75%, 100%. And then in the mask, we will um, we will adjust that slightly. Or will it work if we just put it? behind the dress. Is it working? Hmm. Doesn't quite look like it, does it?
Yeah. Let's, uh... Hmm. Maybe I'm ready to uh, finish it up. Let's color the line. We do the same thing. Uh, new layer over the line. Uh, alt select. Uh, alt click, and it will parent the new layer. Let's call it line color. Pick a hard round brush. And let's see. We don't want to go too dark or too light. So maybe sometimes you want to go completely light. Or completely black. Even when I do this by myself, <laughs> I am doing it by myself, but you know what I mean. Uh, I rush it quite a bit, and it's and it always looks messy, especially if you don't color the lines properly. But when you're actually scaling it down to, you know, like a thousand pixels high, how I usually do for when I put it stuff online, um, it's, you know, it's, it's not, you don't notice it as much. But problem arises when I ever want to sell a print of it, then it's quite messy, so I always go back and tighten, fix up the lines that I've colored and all that it's a bit of a lighter color for this highlighted area of the hair yeah that's pretty good let's do the lips Now, corner of the lips right here, always very dark, I use black for that. It's dark because, you know, the two surfaces, they're coming together fairly closely. up the lips a little bit top lip always 
always pretty dark especially if the light source is coming from that way Let's try brown. Darker brown. Hmm, now, I might leave it at, hang on, let's stick over here. The highlight on the lips and maybe like the eyes, sometimes the way they go, um, I sometimes use them and I don't. In this case, since the overall look is fairly graphic, I think I'm not going to use highlights on the lips. Sometimes majority of the time is spent just going back and forth, you know, fidgeting around with all this sort of, what color should I use for, you know, this line, that line, especially if you don't have it figured out in advance and it's very, very big waste of time. It's, it's a sign of inexperience. Let's color the beam really quick. In the photo, the beam actually has a white paint dabbed on it, so let's see if we can give that kind of look
Well, you don't want to draw too much attention to that wooden beam, right? Um, I think that is okay. That's good enough. This might be a little bit too much here. thing I'm not liking is this purple hue. I think I want to change to something a little more blue to give it a nice little bit of a um, blue and orange thing going on. I think we're almost done. I think the last thing I will try is some color adjustment adjustment layer for color balance um, let's clean this up this whole mess of a layer I should really merge when I can alright but I don't <laughs> let's create a uh, so down here, right next to the masking, these are called adjustment layer. We're gonna pick color balance. And whatever this does, what this does is um, it applies this adjustment layer to everything that's underneath it. Um, this is my biggest time waster right here. Like, it's really cool to play around with it. Sometimes you end up doing it too much and then get too blown out, right? So use it sparingly. So I'm gonna use a bit of red to bump up the red. Yeah. I'm gonna add a little more yellow to it. I like it, I like that, okay. Because before, the dress was a little bit too blue without having even the shadow was blue. But now that I uh, gave it a little bit of yellow tone, the highlight is a little more, it's wider. So it separates from that shadow, blue shadow tone. I don't know, I think that works. Uh, I want to try something just before we finish up here. Yeah, I want to... Slight, give slight texture to this. First. You can be playing around with it for ages and ages. Let's see, uh, one last thing I'll try is uh, maybe putting the uh, overall gradient on top of everything. Let's see. How about blue? Yeah. 
all this is just fluff. Doesn't really matter. It And one thing that's been bothering me is something right here. That line, it's really bothering me. What is it? Who are you? <laughs> I think that might be the pattern which I have merged already yes, yes so, so there's no easy way to fix it I'm just gonna Okay. And my signature. Let's give it a slight red hue to match with the rest of the drawing. Um Yeah, and that's it. I'm gonna call it done. <laughs> if you've been watching all this time, thank you so much for your patience. I don't know if this has been useful or entertaining. <laughs> um, hope you enjoyed it once again. And feel free to leave any comments or questions. And, um, yes, see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>